Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your girl Sherelle and I am back with another review for Greenleaf episode six, the sixth day. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button so it'll let you know when I have new uploads that I've done and hit the like down below. Um, comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the episode and what are your predictions for next week's episode let's get down in the comments and talk about it and let me know what you talk what what you basically think of that's going to happen your predictions like i said i always enjoy talking down in the comments with you guys so let's get into it you already see the title so we open up with bishop on the phone with the fbi and he is gunning them questioning them like why didn't i know that rochelle basic why didn't you guys tell me about rochelle and everything i guess the fbi let her go and gave her some sort of the deal maybe she gave them some sort of information yada 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 and meanwhile he's on the phone and lady may is basically telling him bishop you have a doctor's appointment at eight o'clock and you need to get your behind there. And he ain't trying to hear her about no doctor's appointment. He's ignoring her. He's going off ranting and rating in the background. And um, next thing you know, we have Grace walking in. So Grace was like, who's he talking to? She's like, oh, he's talking to the FBI and he has a doctor's appointment that he needs to go to. So he's mad because the FBI didn't tell him about Rochelle. And, um, you know, uh, he's, he's, he, he's mad. So he's so mad. He looking like, you know what? I ain't even going to the doctor's appointment. So she told Grace, look, you need to help your daddy get to his doctor's appointment. And let's move past that. So we go to Darius. He calls Darius. Hold on. Darius, a.k.a. Rick Fox, a.k.a. Silver Fox. We got to introduce him like that. Darius, a.k.a. Rick Fox, a.k.a. Silver Fox, because he's just so handsome. Yes. Um. So he calls Grace from Vegas and tells Grace, look, Grace, somebody done broke into my hotel room. They done took my cell phone. They done took my laptop. They stole my stuff. Now... He's basically asking her, does she have the emails that he sends her? So Grace proceeds to go into her computer to check um, and basically see that, you know, basically see, you know, if she has the email. So she goes to look at her computer and she starts seeing on her computer without her even doing anything that the emails are being deleted. And you can see the emails being deleted. I said, whoa, this is a. This is a top-notch type of hacker, whoever this is. They are able to delete. But remember, his computer was stolen, so it probably was connected to Grace, where that person who got it can delete everything they need to delete off of Grace's. So, of course, we know Bob had something to do with that because Bob had something to do with Darius being fired. So he had something to do with, of course, deleting the emails so he wouldn't get caught out there he covering his tracks bob we see you uh so you sent your dogs out to handle grace and darius so let's move past that so we go back to the greenleaf estate where grace no not grace where charity is outside at the gate and lo and behold phil dad shows up to the greenleaf estate and she was like, who are you? He was like, I'm the one that you were on the phone with, uh, the one that hung up on you. And she's like, oh, okay. So I told y'all, he was going to show up. He was going to help them at some point. Something inside of me said he was going on. Yeah. But anywho, let's move past that. So we go, we'll come back to that in a bit. We go to Clarissa and Jacob. They are getting ready to take Winky, I believe, to the therapist and to tell him about the divorce and Clarissa you know she's being Clarissa she's heated because Jake still wants the divorce even though she don't and she basically tells him that she don't want Jacob to have sole custody of Winky she's trying to fight fire with fire she's basically trying to force him to stay in the marriage that he doesn't want to stay in because he no longer loves you because 
you crossed the line, you what you did far as this whole will thing in his family. And on top of that, you gave him a STD. And on top of that, you know, the manipulation and on top, it was just so much, Clarissa. Jacob is heated. He is too through with you and he is done. I told you he is done, you know, but let's move past that. So we go to Zara and Sophie. Sophie walks in on Zara and she sees her or kind of, kind of frantic a little bit. And she's like, what's going on? She knows that, you know, the divorce is allowing her to freak out. So we find out that Zara wants to move to New York. And the only thing she got was a ticket to New York, a plane ticket to New York and don't got no place, don't got no job. And she just going to go on a wing and a prayer to New York because she wants to get away and start over and she feels like it has new opportunity. So she's telling Sophia all her plans and Sophia looking at her like, girl, you freaking out because of this divorce. You just want to get away. So let's move past that. We'll come back to that in a minute too as well. So we go back to Phil's dad, now Grace, now Charity, and he's talking to them about Bob. And how Bob used to steal mortgages from black folks. And he used to give them mortgages. And when they couldn't pay the mortgages, he would seize their house. So he was targeting them with mortgages that he probably knew that they couldn't pay. And now that makes a lot of sense why he wants this black church. Because just in case that comes up when he's running for Senate, like this is what you used to do in the black community with your mortgage company. He could say, oh, well, no, I wouldn't do that. I I'm i well supportive of the black community because I have a black and, you know, interracial church and I have black folks in there. See, we see you. We see you, Bob. Okay. We see what you, I see what you're trying to do. You know, you trying to play good politics here and trying to cover your tracks. Okay. So Phil Daz proceed, Mr. Shabazz, that's his name, Mr. Shabazz. It's a school in North New Jersey that's called Shabazz. I believe it's a high school that's called Shabazz. Yeah. But anywho, oh, sometimes I get sidetracked, y'all. But Mr. Shabazz is telling them like how Phil Dad. No, Phil mom used to help Bob, I think, where she probably worked at the church or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, Phil mom used to help them. And Phil, uh, Phil mom used to help Bob and Bob used to steal and target black folks with his mortgage company. Now let's move past that. We go to Lady May, who is downstairs in the kitchen talking to Tara about the house. And she's looking at Tara like, girl, you're going to have to give me something to make me, tell me something to make me believe that you ain't over here trying to scheme with your sister. And Tara's telling her like, look, my sister is a loose cannon. Had I not told her that I met up with you guys, but I really don't trust the way Tara is talking because when she basically said to Rochelle, you are never going to believe who just stopped by. That makes me feel like Bishop and Lady May. Like, how do we know that you are not trying to scam us the same way your sister did us and the same way your brother? Your brother wanted my husband dead and your sister tried to scam my husband out of money. Hello. And your sister caught, you know, had a whole big scam and everything going on. So, you know, she's like, you know, I'm nothing like my sister. And the more I look at this house, I can see that there is so much we can do with this house for, you know, the mothers and the children, you know, and yada, yada, Lady May looking like, mm, so you say. And I, if I was Lady May and Bishop, I would not give them the house. Fight for your house, okay? Fight for that house because you, they, Rochelle and her sister is not to be trusted. I'm so, I'm so sorry to say that. As much as you're supposed to do the right thing, Still, all in all, you don't know 100%. All you guys know is, is that the lady left that house to you, and that's how you're going to keep it. F forget 
what the first will says. All you need to know is the second will. You guys got a will and let that be that. Is y'all house. Stay in it. Keep it. You know, so she could go and try to contest it all she want. Um, you know, but hey, I look at it like put up a fight until you can't fight no more. And don't let these people scam you because they got a background of scamming. And you and Bishop initially tried to do the right thing until you guys seen that. Sometimes God will put you in certain places for you to see certain things about people. And maybe that was one of those things. I'm not going to try to follow what God was trying to do, but we won't know until the season is over with what God was initially trying to do with the Greenleaf family and the church. So we're going to all see what God is trying to do with the Greenleafs. But now we move past that and move towards Bishop down at the new location for the new church, the bar that's being transformed into a church. Um, and lo and behold, Rochelle take it upon herself to show up and harass Bishop and be talking greasy and shading him, telling him, look at you. You know, you're down on your luck. You're losing your church and you're losing your house. Do you think this is a blessing? And he's looking at her like, Rochelle, would you just get out of here? Something is wrong with you. I did not kill your father. I did not call him down to the church that day. I didn't kill him on purpose. And I'm praying and hoping that Bishop is telling the truth. And when he was talking to her, Bishop was like, you know, Rochelle was like, well, who do you think you were talking to? You know, my brother Basie, Basie should have killed you and this, that, and the fourth. And he's just like, you know, you're sick. Go, please go away from me with this, Rochelle, because you are bugging out. I think in whole heart, wholeheartedly, it would make all the sense in the world to her if Bishop had did it. You know, um, she wants Bishop to be guilty. It almost seems like she wants Bishop to be guilty of killing her father because that seems more believable because she believes more so in Basie. And she has so much of a, so much haste and anger towards Bishop, maybe because that haste and anger was, you know, taught and built up to her from Basie. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be right. But let's move past that. You know, she leaves and we go to Noah and Grace at the treatment center getting help uh, for AJ, her son. And he's in there and thank God, praise God, he's in a good mood. So he starts teasing him teasing them, looking, saying, well, look at you guys, you and you, I can see how you guys, you know, hooked up or whatever and had me. So he's in a good mood. You know, he tells them about the medicine that they prescribed to him. And he was like, well, look, I ain't got no health insurance. Don't worry about that, AJ. Your mama and daddy got you. And, you know, Noah, of course, he still got a thing for that old thing. Grace, he's like, look, I found a place near my mom's house for me and AJ. And I'm just letting you know, if your mom and dad can't keep the house, you know, you can come and stay with us until you get your own place. And, you know, it's strictly platonic. You know, it gives us a chance to be a family, yada, yada, yada. When we knew that ain't wholeheartedly true, we know Noah still got a thing for Grace. Noah and Darius aka rick fox aka silver fox knowing they both want to give her something she can feel to let them know to let her know where their love is coming from but anywho i digress let's get past that so we go to jacob and clarissa um and Zora, not Zora. We go to Jacob and Carissa and Sophie walks in and tells her parents, you know, tells Zara parents that Zara plans on moving to New York because she's upset about you guys getting a divorce. And they're just looking like, oh my God, you know, now we got to deal with this mess here and we got to try to fix this. So, you know, she's telling them of everything that's going on. 
and yada, yada, yada. And they're like, okay, thank you for telling us. We're going to go talk to her. Let's move past that. So we go to Bishop tells Lady May that they are not giving the home to Tara because of Rochelle done fired him up. And he like, look, she scammed me once, fooled me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Fool me third time, shame on me, or however it go. But he, he refuses to be scammed again, so he ain't having it. Excuse me, miss. No. Excuse me, Bishop. No, I'm not having it. So that's how Bishop like, no, I'm not having it. And I don't blame him because I would be like, no, I'm not having it. So Bishop like, we ain't giving that house to her. So let's move past that. So we go to Phil and Judy, AKA Judas, down at the church looking at the documents. And Judy is so, so shocked of the secretary lady having the documents in order. Was that some shade? You, you you trying to make it seem like she was incompetent or something because she always walks around. You felt like she couldn't do her job. Maybe she was that good that she could walk around, Judy. See, Judy, I'm side-eyed in you because, I don't know, you, you your daddy's child and you, mm-hmm. I see you, Judas. So as they're talking and looking at the documents, in roles, Phil's dad, in charity and they proceed to telling phil about phil's dad you know and walks phil's dad in charity and they proceed to telling you know i guess they proceed trying to tell you know phil exactly what happened um, about Bob, about him stealing mortgages. And of course, Judy don't want to hear that about her father. And Phil, long and behold, he doesn't believe what his dad is trying to tell him. And apparently there went, there was some things where uh, Phil is still holding on with his dad, like a hurt boy, you know, about some things his dad did in the past. So he's hurt by some of the things his dad did in the past and he brings those things up obviously because he's still hurt so that's why he can't believe what his dad is trying to tell what his dad is trying to tell him so he's basically like look get out and don't come back and charity turns to him as his dad is walking out and says you know i'm going to pray for you she said some people say that they're going to pray for you as a jab, I'm going to say it because you truly need it. Because there's no way you can have this malice and be this stupid where you can't believe what this man is trying to tell you. And I believe what his dad is trying to tell him. And Phil, this is going to come back to bite you in the behind. And he's standing there like a hurt child, a hurt little boy. That same hurt little boy that his dad hurt many years ago. He's still carrying that hurt around. So that's why he can't believe his dad. But you might want to believe your dad on this one, Phil. And I think somewhere down the line, you're going to find out your dad was trying to tell you the truth about what happened. And you're going to feel stupid. So we're going to watch how that plays out. Okay. Now we go to Jacob and Clarissa back at the Greenleaf Estate. And they're talking and they're having a moment of reminiscing about how they met and Clarissa was like, that's the first time you ever said us, you know, when, you know, that's basically the first time you ever said us when you were talking to Zara. So she was like, he was like, look, Clarissa, I'm happy that I met you because if I didn't meet you, I wouldn't have my kids. So they have a moment and an epiphany came you know, all the things that she probably wanted him to say that he never said and that he, you know, she never heard him say in the past. That's how you know when someone is turning out for the good. Um, basically, she tells him that he can have shared custody of Winky. Now let's move past that. <laughs> Kudos for you, Clarissa. You did the right grown woman thing. We go to Lady May, you know, 
now we go to where everybody is seeing Clarissa and Winky go off somewhere. I guess they're leaving the house and, you know, they're moving out and everybody's watching them saying their goodbyes to them. And we go to Lady May. Um, I forgot something too. Lady May and Bishop and that when they, he came and told her not to take the house, that she wasn't giving the house away, he read her down. He said, how are you going to come hard on Jacob about his transgressions when you got a 40-year-old secret about Grace and who her daddy really is? You know, and he basically told her, check yourself before you try to check anybody else. You need to get yourself together because you run around here with a 40-year-old secret and you ain't told nobody yet. So now what brings us back to this point where Lady May is in front of the house and she drops the bomb on them and tell them about Grace and says how Bishop is not Grace's daddy and Lionel, who is Bishop's, who used to be Bishop's best friend and who passed away is Grace's father. And and she looks and like, look, dinner is at 7.30. She dropped the bomb on them. That's my secret. That's my transgression. I don't care what y'all think. Think dinner will be on the table at 7.30. She walks back in the house and everybody's just looking like, what the world is cherry? Everybody faces drop. She's like, look, Grace already knew. And I was waiting to tell y'all. Bottom line, I done told y'all, let's get in his house and eat. Now, um... We go to Grace, Jacob, and Charity, where they're outside and they're laughing and joking and talking about, you know, the bomb that their mother just dropped on them and how dinner was quiet and they're teasing Grace and so forth and on. And they're laughing. It was like, we knew, you know, in, you, you know, mama's light skin, but you was always extra light. And we couldn't understand that. You know, we coming out dark and you light extra light, you know, we always knew that you might, something might not be right with you. <laughs> and lo and behold, we know that she probably light like that because of Lionel, somebody in Lionel's family, maybe that light or whatever. So, you know, yeah, because Lionel wasn't that light. Yeah. And anywho, so as they're laughing and joking and they're talking, you know, and they're just still shocked from what their mother just revealed to them grace gets a call from darius telling her to meet him at his house okay and now let's skirt past that we go to zora and sophie and they're talking and she was like, well, why did you tell my mom and dad, you know, what I was going to do? She said, but you know what? That's okay. Because I told your mother about your, your ninny pictures, you know? And she was like, you did? She was like, yeah, I did. I'm petty like that. So anywho, so let's go past that. So Grace arrives at Darius, AKA sexy, uh, uh not sexy, AKA Rick Fox, AKA, uh, Silver Fox house. And she rings the doorbell and she gets no answer, but she sees this truck pulls up on her and the headlights are beaming and she looking like, what in the world is going on? So long behold, guess who jumps out the truck? Clarissa's lover, Fernando, who out here burning chicks up in the street telling Grace, he walks up to Grace like he wants to do something. Really, Fernando? Do you know who Grace is? Oh, ha ha, VIP rolling up the B.I.G. You want some of what Matt got? She took her own uncle out. You want her to take you out running up on her like that? You know, you find out, you find out what them hands feel like. You find out what she can do. Same thing she did to her uncle, she'll probably do to you, but even worse. So he basically tells Grace, you need to stay out of it. You know, I'm going to take you, goes to trying to pull on her arm. I'm going to take you to where Darius is. And she looked like, if you don't get your hands off me, I'm going to hit you with something you ain't gonna see coming. I was just like, yeah, that's right, Grace. Stand your ground. Grace a thug. She a holy thug. You know, she a gospel gangster, you know? So, anywho, 
So he basically tells Grace, you know what? You need to stay out of this and mind your business and so forth and on and yada, yada, yada. And Grace looking at him like, I will most certainly not. <laughs> okay, we already know Grace. She ain't going back down for a challenge. Like she went to find out everything she needed to find out on Mac. And when Grace is on a mission, we all know she's going to complete that mission. She did it with her uncle and she's going to do it with Bob. She's going to do it with Bob. She's going to bring every... Grace is the type of person she will stop at nothing until she brings everything to the light. And that is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, yeah. Grace is going to bring everything full force, no matter what it takes. And she ain't afraid to do that. You ain't going to scare her. So, She's a soldier. She's a true soldier in the army of the Lord. Like she ain't, she ain't playing. She's Lady May child. So, and we all see how Lady May is. Lady May, she's a strong patriot. And she looking like her daddy. This is Lady May is a strong matriarch. Her father is a strong patriarch, and I believe Grace has a good heart, and I think that's what keeps her thriving. And the fact that she just want everything to turn out right. She does things for the better of mankind in my eye. Like that's what I see about Grace. She wants what's right. And if she can't stand by when wrong is being done to other folks, if she feels it's something of her that she has to make it right. But that's my review for... Greenleaf episode six, season five, the sixth day. I can't wait to review uh, next week's episode, day seven, um, to see what's going to happen on that. And it looked like um, her and Fernando going to square up again. And Grace looked like she she about to hit him with that holy field or something like that. But anywho, drop down in the comments and let me know what are y'all thoughts on this episode, episode six, and what y'all think is going to happen. And yeah, that's my review. Until next time, see you, Shugs.